What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chung of Benny, and I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're skipping the intro because I want to deep dive right into this play-in tournament because I got some strong opinions about it. And I know, Greg, you, you we're going to agree and we're going to disagree on certain aspects of, you know, this play-in tournament. But my number one problem with the play-in tournament, for one, is the fact that, you know, I feel like it devalues the regular season. Because if you really think about it, as long as you're in the top 10 of each conference, you have the opportunity to make the postseason. So what is the point of even winning games, a certain amount of games in the regular season, if as long as you make sure you stay out of the bottom five of each conference, you're going to have an opportunity to play in the postseason. So I think that's one of my biggest problems. And then on top of that, why are teams that are already in the postseason as a seven and eight seed have the opportunity of getting bounced out in one to two games exactly that, against a nine and ten seed that don't really deserve it exactly yeah that's that's my problem it's like why like why like if i fought that hard to get a top eight seed i deserve to be in there i just didn't have to in prove the western it. conference exactly and i gotta play the bottom feeders nine ten maybe 11 12 and who's not even on my same skill level or have the same star power that my team has like i'm gonna beat them in, in a one game series it's not even and then i gotta then that so i waste that energy when i could have saved it to get ready for the number one seed the number two seed like come on now it doesn't make any sense and now. then let's think about a scenario where okay like as of this year the lakers and the warriors they're you know the top teams in the play-in tournament they got lebron james anthony davis on la side and then for golden state you have draymond green and you know stephen curry you know but let's say there's a scenario where one of those teams is eliminated from the postseason for example the la lakers do you guys think that the NBA ratings will shoot up with with the postseason not having the Lakers and LeBron James in it? It doesn't make no, any sense. No, it's going to go and down. And even the fact that, you know, Golden State was a 10th seed and Stephen Curry was able to propel them to an 8th seed this late in the season, I think that they don't – it's it's almost an injustice to them for – given the fact that they're going to still have to have to, you know, fight it out in order to get into the postseason. So – this just it doesn't make any doesn't sense. Doesn't make to any me. sense. But I do going back to your ratings for the point. I mean, they got to get the ratings back up. So I understand why the playing game was implemented. I just think it was implemented in the wrong way. If it was implement, you can't do a playing tournament east and west. If it was top one through sixteen, which I thought they should have done that for the bubble, top one through sixteen, that's when you could do a playing because then it's a little bit more interesting. It's one through sixteen. It's no conference base. We can see potential different matches with the first and second top, round. And on top of that, last year they were in a bubble, so you don't you don't have to worry about traveling and everything. And that's one of the biggest reasons as to why you know the NBA hasn't implemented the one through sixteen playoff set. Exactly. And then going to this season, we had so many injuries. I mean, the list of names I got for you guys. Donovan Mitchell, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, LaMelo Ball, Giannis, Jamal Murray, James Wiseman, Steph Curry, Paul George, Joel Embiid, all these top stars in each team who they're trying to market and put on these primetime networks. They're not even playing in the games. <laughs> right. So it don't even matter. Like, we're seeing blowouts on these live ESPN, TNT, NBA TV games. National televised games. Like, no one wants to watch that. And in and, 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 and then the, even the matchups don't even make sense. Like the like putting the Pel I've seen the Pelicans way too much. I'm tired of seeing them on TV. Right. Man. And then on top of it, okay, and that's gonna kind of lead to my next point. And this <laughs> doesn't really have much to do with you know the playing tournament, but I feel like you know if we encourage the playing tournament, the NBA is gonna also try to implement some so many new things into you know the NBA association and everything, trying to make it more entertaining. And in all reality, they're kind of doing the opposite. What the hell was that Marvel game for? Like, <laughs> like, who who, who was that for? Like, how many, you know, six-year-old kids are watching NBA games for real, man? <laughs> like, who was that for? When I yeah. saw the effects of an air ball and it had smoke <laughs> and everything going down, I turned the game off. Like, that, it, it, they're just trying to implement too much stuff into the NBA. And starting with the playing tournament, I just don't feel like none of it is a good idea. I mean, we're essentially making this reality TV or turning it into a game show. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I totally agree with that point. And I, it's good to make changes in your league when stuff is happening, like a pandemic that's that's been going on. But make changes where everybody can feel comfortable. Obviously, they're going to disagree. Not everything's going to be 100% right with every person. But at least reward the teams that have been fighting hard to get in the top eight seeds in this implement. But to have a seven, like this east the east playing game i mean who's intrigued who's intriguing the east nobody, playing game i mean the celtics just intriguing. exactly nobody. the celtics just lost their second best player like 
And then the Charlotte, I mean, they're young. Indiana Pacers only have three guys in. And then the Wizards, like, b- besides Russell Westbrook, Beal's hurt. So, I mean, what is intriguing about this playing game? Like, these guys are just playing games, these one-game tournaments, and it's not even going to be Especially in, in a rush rust season where the second half uh, schedule is so compacted. You guys freaking three games and four nights followed by the following week where it's five games and seven nights and then you're back to two games and three nights and there's not much room for rest and then on top of that it's like man like they're trying to get rid of load managing but if you really want to get of load managing cut the regular season down i agree they're talking about you know everybody's talking about lebron james and luka Doncic complaining about being in the playing tournament because it affects them but nobody talks about adam silver and oh, these other guys not cutting down the regular season and i love NBA basketball. Do not get me wrong. But if you're trying to, you know, make the league more intriguing, cut the season down to 50 to 60 games. Let the top 16 teams in the entire NBA face off in the postseason. Make it one game elimination. And that's going to make it the most interesting NBA season ever. Bro. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. Cut not that. a playing tournament. Yeah, I totally agree. Playing with my emotions. Like, this is not... <laughs> This doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. It and then doesn't. on top of that, if you really think about it, what, the, what I've seen by the from the utah jazz and the phoenix suns just literally you know kind of tells me everything that you know how do i say this it didn't take for a playing tournament for them teams to want to you know get a higher seed so why implement it whatsoever i mean these are the top two teams in the nba yeah and they're still trying to fight to win games so they can have a specific seed in a tough western conference yeah, get that so how is advantage. the playing tournament really making things more competitive when it's already competitive yeah. if you want to make the nba better find these rests for throwing out guys for fucking giving them technical fouls for having bad breath and stuff like that man. Like, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous yeah it doesn't make sense so if is there a new idea that you would want besides the cut down? Like, would you like kind of how they do in the NFL where they don't play all the teams in, on the other side of the conference? They only play some teams on, on the other side of the conference. Would you want to cut down maybe 60, maybe 65, 70? Like, I don't think 82 games. That's a lot. If you're asking all these guys to play 82 games, like what else? Should, I mean, 82 games. Like, that's not even realistic to play all 82 and then games. Even, like, even for some of the fans that, you know, watch NBA games, like, bro, if you were in the NBA, would you? play 82 game like your body no. is, is you have to be in insane shape to really do that like i always I mean, thought we got advanced very, technology yeah but i still. always thought it was weird that you know people complained about guys not playing all every single game every year like what that is the craziest thing ever yeah, it's not realistic Th- this season is like nine months long and then you got two and a half three months off depending on what team you play for so i just i have so many issues with the it's NBA, just bad man. it's just bad timing i think it's bad timing with this virus um and how the and how the layoff and everything like that, but switching over to the people that are. And, and before before you even get to your next topic, keep in mind the difference in days was fifty seven between last season and this season. Exactly, and those players those players that were in that are hurt, are hurt. Right, and then on top of that, it's like okay, they they were coming into the NBA with the mindset that okay, we're gonna start off regular, but then we're gonna hit them with a shit ton of games in the second half. Like it just doesn't make any sense, man. Like I don't know who came up with this format, <laughs> but they ass need to be fired. Like yeah, I, told, said. I I agree, I agree. But looking at the playing games, we got let's start with the West because they're more intriguing. You got the Lakers, Warriors, Memphis, and and, and the Spurs. Obviously, the Lakers went healthy. We know that they they're one of the best teams in the West. You th- I think the Lakers get out of the I think they make actually bold prediction. I think they get into the five or six seed with Portland's schedules being tough and the Mavericks, you know, not being I able agree. to close out games. I agree. And Portland struggles with closing out games too. I mean, Dame's been playing well, but he I mean, sometimes he just game inconsistent. that Portland yeah. plays is a nail biter. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, exactly. The Warriors outside of Curry doesn't have a lot of firepower and they're tiny. They're not going to match up against the Lakers, so I'm not even going to talk about that. But, I mean, they do have a top five defensive rating, so we have to take that yeah, into account. Yeah, I think, no. Yes, yeah. I still would bet against the Warriors when it comes to, you know, them facing off against the Los Angeles Lakers. I totally, I totally agree. I don't think that the Lakers should just push them over. And then we have the Grizzlies. I do like I do like John Morant and how they're playing. And then you got the Spurs. I mean, DeMar DeRozan is really doing most of the work, creating that offense. So, I mean, it's not really – I think the Grizzlies take that one. But – it's really just it's really not really a lot to talk about. I think the Lakers get out. I think the Memphis and the Spurs might make it interesting, but it's not really a game that everybody's like really thinking about right now. But then okay, let me ask let me tell you this, Greg. Let me ask you this. After the play in tournament, because it, it at most it would be like what, four games? Yeah. Maybe five or something. I don't know. 
But after the play-in tournament is over, then we're into the first round, and it's like, okay, like, what? Has, is the interest in the in the postseason a lot higher now that the playing tournament is over or what? Because like like I said, if a highly favored team like the Lakers or let's say the Warriors gets bounced out of the postseason, the first round is going to be even more unwatchable than it already has been for years to come. So I just don't understand Damn. the concept of the playing tournament. It, de it devalues the regular season because as long as you're a top 10 team, you have the opportunity to make the postseason, which means that the second half of the po uh, of the regular season, you don't necessarily aren't going to be as eager to win games. I totally agree. So I, I just don't understand this playing tournament. I think it's, you know, a lot of people are raving about it because it's something that's new. new. Like, we rave about new stuff all the time. TikTok, Dogecoin, shit like that. But I mean, this scenario, I just don't think that it's going to be beneficial long term. Especially when we get back to some normalcy See. in the NBA. Yeah. And then switching over to the East, you got the Celtics. They just lost Jalen Brown. Unfortunate injury. That's going to hurt. But I think that they can... With Jason Tatum and the way he's playing, I think that they can edge over the Charlotte Hornets. You got the Pacers. They got Brogdon, Sabonis, who's playing really well. And they got Karis LeVert, who's coming along strong with this new acquisition. Them top three, I think they can they will play a tough series against the Wizards. And we, all, we obviously know that the Wizards have Russell Westbrook. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think, who do you, who do you got for that? Who do you got for that? I mean, for that series, I'll take Washington just because, like, they seem to, you know, found their groove as of late. Yeah. Russell Westbrook is playing great basketball. Um, as long as Bradley Beal comes back from his hamstring and is feeling, you know, at least 80, 75 percent healthy, I think that they'll be able to beat uh, Indiana Pacers team that seems to, you know, not have much chemistry, especially with their coaching staff. Yeah, totally agree. And then with the, with, I mean, with the Celtics, I take the Celtics over the Charlotte Hornets. Um, and I think Tatum can lead that team to to playing against a against a Brooklyn. Brooklyn next in the first round, and I actually got I got the I got the Pacers. I'm gonna because I'm from Indiana. I'm gonna take the Pacers in that one. But wrapping up our thoughts about the playing, I I like it. I think it's cool. I just don't think it's cool for the East and West for the conferences. That's it. I think they're trying to. I think NBA is trying to make their money back, which every business is trying to make their money back right. during this virus. But I think it the has NFL to be a added a 17th, 17th game. game. It doesn't I mean, make any doesn't sense. make any sense. So I mean, these they have to recover from the virus. But I also think it just needs to be effective. Figure out a way where you can benefit not only the league, but benefit your players. At the end of the day, it's about marking your players and make sure they're healthy and playing on all these primetime games. It doesn't look good when none of your players are playing on the primetime game or not playing at full strength. It's not good. So we'll see how it, we'll see how it turns out with this playing game. And hopefully that all these teams that are in the playing game, they make it competitive and entertaining for the fans. But nicely, do you have any more final thoughts? I mean, once again, I don't I don't see how it can be more competitive when you're allowing more teams the opportunity to make the postseason. If you if you have if you have a format where it's the top eight and the top eight only, why would you add two more teams to the equation and think it's going to be more competitive? Yeah, and I, yeah, don't reward bad teams. You know, exactly. yeah, I, that's the one thing like, I don't like either. And it, on top of that, they've been trying to get Zion in for the longest. He <laughs> can't even drag the Pelicans to a nine seed. They're always a tenth seed. Yeah, they're like five games back right now. So, so I mean, I, mean I, I don't understand man. it. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Be respectful in the comment section. But, you know, I, I want to hear you guys' opinion and everything. Y'all already know we're going to be engaged with you guys and all that stuff. But, you know, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you're new to our YouTube channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice review, as always, and a five-star rating because you guys know that we deserve it. But aside from that, it's your boy, Nicely Chunk of Benny, and I'm here with my co-host, Greg King, and we out. We out.